The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! To views from the sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And we just got over with all the conference championships for the college football season. We're going to get into some college basketball and NBA updates. And then, of course, we have to get into week 14 of the NFL picks as the NFL season gets closer and closer to the end. But we're now in December. So, college football season starting to come to a close. And Michigan is. Back to back Big Ten champions. Can you say that one more time? Michigan is back to back Big Ten champions. Thank you. Malik, take the floor. How you feel? <laughs> I'm even though this was a this was an expected outcome. Yeah. I I don't know why. Like watching this game, I was more nervous than I've been in <laughs> a very long time. Like I expected them to pick it up in the second half because that's what they do like every game. Mm -hmm. But like I I was watching like the second half on my phone and I couldn't watch it on my TV because I was just like, please, please, please just just get this done. And they did it. Yeah, it it took them a a while to get going. Yeah, Purdue was throwing everything they had at Michigan. That that fake um, oh my God, what's the name of the play? That fake flea flicker they did, Mm -hmm. that that's one of the most innovative plays I've seen. And it seems so simple, but, like, I don't think any team has done that besides Purdue yeah. in, like, the past four or five years. That play was awesome. Charlie Jones and Aiden O'Connell's chemistry was just off the charts. Charlie Jones was close to unstoppable. He's been all season. But Michigan was just more talented, and they're just the better team. Mm-hmm. Uh, J.J. McCarthy did what he had to do, three touchdowns. Made that one bad mistake, but he's going to – make mistakes like that because his athleticism and he like he likes to take chances sometimes mm-hmm. donovan edwards is becoming the lead back with blake quorum out he had 180 something yards his speed and his burst and elusiveness he's he is overall more complete of a running back than blake quorum mm-hmm. and as he starts more it's going to get even scarier will johnson Freshman defensive back from Gross Point. A legacy, five-star cornerback. I think he was the second-ranked quarterback in the country. He didn't start the season. He got more playing time as the season has gone on. And in the past three or four games, he has been a lockdown corner. He is only 18, and he is locking down some of the better receivers and offenses in the country. He had two interceptions in the Big Ten Championship game. Both of them were extremely impressive. All of their most talented players are like freshmen and sophomores. So the future is bright. Mm -hmm. Colston Loveland had that great catch for the first touchdown of the game. And they're 13 and 0 for the first time in school history. First back to back Big Ten championship since 91 92. They've beaten Ohio State back to back. And two years ago, at the end of the COVID season, People wanted Jim Harbaugh gone. People assumed the program was broken completely. I I figured it was broken because it kind of was at the time, but a lot of people figured like it was just all downhill. And Jim Harbaugh has run back two years of, honestly, maybe the most back-to-back dominant years of Michigan football in a very long time. Mm -hmm. I think they're like 21 and like two. In the past twenty three games, and they're just they're just playing great football. Yep. And now they have to battle through the college football playoff. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, other conference championships that happened: Pac twelve championship happened on last Friday, and it was a close game all the way through up until the fourth quarter, where Utah just 
smack USC in the mouth and uh, had like three big plays, basically, that just ended the game. Uh, so Utah goes on to win 47-24. So that you would expect. To... I still think Caleb Williams might win the Heisman because before he got hurt, he was balling. Yeah. He looked unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And with that, USC kicked out of the college football playoff. Then we had Kansas State taking on TCU uh, in the Big 12 championship. Kansas State also knocks off TCU. But in overtime and only by three. Uh, TCU fought pretty good in this one. Max Duggan literally exhausted himself to the sideline at one point um, with some big runs, making a big comeback for them. He but, rushed for like 70 yards in like the last two yeah. minutes of the game. Uh, and then just Kansas State was able to get it done in overtime. And luckily for TCU, because it was a close game, they are allowed to stay in the college football playoff. The SEC championship, Georgia took care of business against LSU, 50 to 30. Um, the American Comp, the American Athletic Championship, Tulane beat UCF, 45 28. And the ACC championship, Clemson beat the Brakes off of North Carolina, 39 to 10. Yeah, DJ got benched. Yep. His time at Clemson is officially over. He's in the transfer portal. Along which, with a billion other quarterbacks. Yeah. This, I, I love how insane this is. And there are going to be a lot of players without teams. And yeah. who, who knows? It's, it's just chaos. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about it probably yeah. a little bit uh, during bowl, like when we get into bowl talk, because there's going to be some bowl games where, like, um, shoot, who's Wisconsin playing? Who's Wisconsin playing? Yes, because their bowl game has two transfer portal quarterbacks. So who knows who's going to start for Wisconsin and who's going to start for their opponent? I can't remember. I mean, the K Kentucky Iowa game, they they have no idea who they're playing because Will Levis is okay, pretty much in the he's getting ready for the draft. True. And Iowa's their second stringer transferred and uh, their first stringer got hurt. So, oh, yeah. Oklahoma State because okay, yeah, Sanders yeah. is transferring. So both Graham Mertz and Spencer Sanders both transferring out. So who knows gonna, who's going to start in that game? Wild. Um, just things like that are, are crazy. Um, so after the bowl game or after the championships games subsided, the big question was who's getting in to the college football playoffs? Would it be Ohio State? Would it be Alabama? Well, the whole Alabama argument was never it never made sense. Well, you know, Nick Saban, he oh, sat in his God. kitchen and really tried to and, fight for and it. And his crimson blazer. Yeah. And his crimson and white tie and tried to tell the world why Alabama was a playoff team. Yeah. Why did they get I don't understand giving him screen time. What what was the purpose of that? He's Nick I, Saban, I, I guess. I don't know. That that's the reason I just I can't stand Alabama. Um I think rightfully so, Ohio State did get slotted into that fourth spot. They only lost to Michigan. Michigan is 13-0. and They're number two, so why not give Ohio State another shot? So when we get into the playoffs, Ohio State will be playing Georgia, and Michigan will be taking on TCU. Can't wait to preview those. Um, one other note, speaking of college football playoffs, it has been confirmed that they are going to expand the college football playoff to 12 teams. Is it? Straight next year or is it 2024? I think 2024. Okay. Yeah. Um, I couldn't remember exactly. So that will be really interesting because, like, if you take this year, that would include teams like Washington, Penn State, USC, Kansas State, Utah, Clemson, Tennessee, Alabama, Ohio State, TCU, Michigan, and Georgia. Which is weird. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see how that will take place in the coming years. But anyway... We got the college football playoffs coming up, some bowl games coming up. We'll preview some of those in the coming weeks. But most of the main ones are at least two weeks away. Um, so we're going to take a, a quick college football hiatus. Um, and like I said, we'll probably talk about some transfer stuff because guys like Jackson Smith and Jigba are not playing for Ohio State in the playoffs. So that'll be interesting. Um, 
All right, let's move on to college basketball because college basketball just keeps getting crazier. Um, any team that starts to get on a run or people think is good, it, it seems like every time that happens, they come back to earth and they lose right after. So if you look at the tw top 25 rankings, you will distinctly notice there is no Michigan State. Hmm. There is no North Carolina. Hmm. Interesting. Everybody keeps losing and going on, like, bad, bad losing streaks. Yeah. So we'd been talking, we'll start with, you know, the home teams. We'd been talking about Michigan State being a very good team, knocking off a bunch of good teams to start the season. And then... I'm not sure what happened. All of a sudden, we kind of mentioned it last. I, did we mention it last week? I can't remember. We the talked days. about Portland. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, and we right after the, we that. We mentioned the Malik Hall injury, too. Yeah. So, right after that, the ACC Big Ten Championship, it probably was that night. I think it was a Wednesday. That Notre Dame just beat the brakes off of Michigan State. Cormac Ryan. 70 to 52. I think he just hit another three as we're speaking right now. Probably. <laughs> Ugh, it was ugly. Again, Michigan State, yes, they do have the injuries, but they had been playing through them somewhat already. Just would have expected a little bit better of a game if they're going to lose. Then, just on Sunday? It was Sunday. Yeah, opening Big Ten game <sighs> at home against uh, Northwestern. Those, those Purple Cats from Chicago. Yeah. What 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 do you think? What's your analysis of what happened in that one? I don't know. I didn't get to watch a whole lot of it. I was actually working on this day. Okay. But just the I know that Northwestern is a team that if from time to time they have decent teams. Um so again, it's the Big 10. It's can't take it for granted, but at the same time it's also Northwestern. They just got blown out by Pitt just before that, for their ACC Big Ten champ, uh, challenge game. So, I don't know. It's just another disappointing one, I guess. And it's kind of weird. Yeah, leading scorers in the game were A.J. Hoggard with 12 and Matty Sissoko with 12. Yeah, they like they just didn't shoot well. Yeah. And, that, that, you know, you're going to have one of those games, but you always expect when you're playing a – somewhat weaker opponent that you can get through that kind of stuff. So maybe this is a good slump, honestly. Maybe, maybe it's a good slump for Michigan State that they need another kick in the pants uh, while they're trying to figure things out. They got uh, Penn State tonight. Who knows? what? I, honestly, honest, Penn State, playing at Penn State right now is dangerous. Yeah. It so, is because they're getting better. Right. They got some talent. Um, but if Michigan State can get through this game, uh, they then have a cakewalk of a schedule, theoretically, uh, where they take on Brown, then they take on Oakland, and then they take on Buffalo. Those all should be wins. Yes. And then we get back into that Big Ten schedule once the, uh, the new year begins. So Michigan State has some time to figure things out, get back into the swing of things. But right now it's just another one of those, those down periods right now. Um, yeah, say say they lose this game tonight against Penn State and they're five and five. Right. What you were your thought? What were your thoughts be if they lose this one? I'm starting to expect it honestly right now. Um, but it might be okay. Uh, going into the new year, you would expect they'd be eight and five, barring some terrible, terrible thing. Thing. Uh, but. It might be, again, it might be good that over the holiday season, you got to think about you're just 500 after you beat all these good teams and now you're losing to some tough teams. Even with injuries, you, you got to put those aside because everybody's going to go through those at some point during the season. So it's a little disappointing after the way that they started, but at the same time, it is what it is, and we'll see um, where we go from here. Uh, on the other hand... Those Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, they've they've played two games in the past like week and a half. 
Yeah, and we we mentioned the Virginia game because that happened before the show uh, last week. So we kind of mentioned that. Lost a close one to Virginia. Probably could have won that game. And then it happened again. Kentucky beat them 73-69. to What do you think happened in this one? Uh, kind of more what happened in the Virginia game. They they were back and forth with Kentucky for a lot of the game. They would have moments where they'd go up by six, seven points, and then they'd go into a dry spell for three, four minutes. Kentucky ties it and takes a lead. It went back and forth like that for most of the game until the last, like, two minutes where Kentucky finally just took hold, hit some shots. Jalen Llewellyn got hurt, had a knee injury that looks, I'm not sure how bad it will be. Mm-hmm. It He was clearly in a lot of pain on the court. They had to carry him off the court, kind of. He could only, like, step on one leg. Mm-hmm. And Doug, um, Doug McDaniel came in and honestly did a good job for the rest of the game with what they needed from him, but yeah, they they still they just they they don't have that consistency yet with a lot of their guys. Outside of Hunter Dickinson and Jet Howard, they haven't figured out what they're doing with the rest of their rotation. Right. And the rest of their guys. I still think Joey Baker needs to play more. Uh I think Kobe Bufkin has played better in the past few games. He's getting into a little bit of a groove. Terrence Williams is doing his job. The other the rest of the rotation it seems like Jawan Howard is just searching right now. He's mm-hmm. still testing things out. And they have, let me see, how many more games until they start Big Ten play? They play Minnesota. It's well, they start good. Minnesota tonight. Yeah. They play at Minnesota tomorrow night, which isn't the hardest start. Mm-hmm. Minnesota might be the, well, at this moment, the worst team in the Big Ten. So it yeah. would help a lot if you could win this game. Playing at Minnesota is never easy. Right. And Minnesota's 4-4, four and four, and that yeah. tells you if, if they're one of the lesser teams in the Big Ten. Like, that just tells you uh, what you have to go through in the Big yeah, Ten. It, it, would, it would be really tough if they got off to an 0-1 start in the Big Ten with not the hardest game to start. Mm-hmm. But after that, they have Lipscomb at home. Should should be a win. But you can't – Lipscomb's one of those teams you can't take for granted, though. True. Because they're one of those weird small schools that, you know, they make a tournament appearance every once in a while. Yeah. So. They go to North Carolina, who's – it's really fallen off and doesn't have a lot of momentum right now. But at the same time, they're, they're looking out a lot of stuff. At the same time, North Carolina's looking for a bounce back game. They are. So, and then they play Central Michigan, which I, I don't expect that to be a very hard game at all. Right. But then January comes and the Big Ten slate officially starts, mm-hmm. and they started with Maryland, who's probably the hottest team in the conference right now. Yep. So yeah, the gauntlet begins where everybody beats everybody. Yeah, I, I would like for them to go at least. Three and one in the next four games, yeah. but it 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 all depends on that Minnesota game tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. I hope they win. They're so inconsistent right now that I've I'm not sure what'll happen. I mean they they absolutely destroyed Pitt in their game that they played in New York. They beat them by like almost forty, but then they get blown out by Arizona State. Yeah, they play close to Ohio State. I mean they play close to Ohio, but they win. They're blowing out Jackson State, then they ended up blowing the lead in the last two minutes, but they win. Like, I I don't know what f- to expect out of this team right right now. And I, we might not know till like, midseason mm-hmm. what this team really is, especially with Jalen Llewellyn being out and Doug, having, Doug McDaniel having to be the point guard maybe for the rest of the season. Right. So, yeah, I I just hope they get that one tomorrow. Yeah. They're they're the more talented team. They sh- they're the better team overall. So, yeah. Right. Even though it's at Minnesota, I, I hope they get it. Last year, they lost to Minnesota at home. They were in a process of figuring things out then, too. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, we briefly mentioned North Carolina. Um, last week on the show, they had lost three straight, a couple in those tournaments, some good teams. Now again, just on Sunday, they lost again to Virginia Tech, 80-72. to Yeah. Now it does look like Virginia Tech's going to be one of those tough teams again. Uh it seems like the past few years, Virginia Tech is just back to being a very good team uh, in the ACC in general. So just something to watch out for. I think North Carolina having some early season woes, like we said, with uh, Michigan State. 
just some of these teams that are surprisingly losing, I guess. Um, but I assume they'll be there in the end at some point. Um, yeah, there, there are also some teams that are kind of living, going above what their preseason expectations were, like UConn. Mm-hmm. People expected them to be good. They're firing on all, on all cylinders right now. Yeah. They've got a, they've built some good depth with young guys and some veterans that have them undefeated right now. Uh, Arkansas has played a bunch of close games, Mm -hmm. but they're figuring out ways to win and they're getting guys healthy. So they're good. I mentioned Maryland, Jameer Young transferred from Charlotte, originally from Maryland playing his butt off. Tim and Dante Scott are playing really good for Maryland. Mm -hmm. And then Duke, even though they were preseason top 10, I think a lot of people were kind of questioning what they would look like now under a new head coach, coach K gone. Yeah. They're eight and two right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Quality start, nothing too special, but I think it's a good tar- good start to a season where they're figuring out what pro what kind of program they're going to be from this point on. Right. Yeah, and again, we'll get to really get a feel for a lot of these teams once we hit the new year. That's when a lot of the conference uh, play starts, um, and that's where I expect college basketball to just get crazy. It, like. We see it every year. The Big Ten beats each other up. Um, ACC will beat each other up quite a bit. Now, the one that will probably stick around is going to be Houston. Yeah. Houston. They've, they've got everything you need to make a run. They play in a smaller conference, but we've seen them in the tournament make a run every year, so they're, they're the real deal. Yeah, they their style of play is built for like tur- the tournament mm-hmm. and just, yeah playing hard against every team they go against right so i'm just awaiting the standings to just go crazy at some point like even just looking at the top 25 if you look at after you get to that outside of the top 25 and you see the others receiving votes there's a bunch of teams in there that are receiving votes um just showing you how many teams are right there in the mix Um. Anything else you needed to touch on on the on college basketball? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think in terms of teams. No, I think there are a few players that I like that are standing out. Uh, he had a lot of preseason hype, but he's pretty much exceeding all of the hype that he had in the preseason. Zach Eady, he's averaging twenty three and thirteen right now, mm-hmm. and he looks like one of those big guys that can really play in the NBA. He's 7'3", but he can move. He doesn't move like a 7'3 guy. He's not skinny. Right. But he, he's he's kind of like Yao Ming-ish. He's got a solid build. Yeah, he's he's Yao Ming-ish, but he's, he's kind of like swifter on his feet than him. He can get off the ground. Mm-hmm. He doesn't really get tight. Like he, for a 7'3 guy, he has a lot of attributes that are like, that a smaller person has. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of stamina. He's in great shape. He can get off the floor. Zach Eady's been dominating. I would say he's maybe not quite as athletic, but he's a, he's a similar build to maybe a Miles Turner. I can see that. Miles Miles is pretty athletic, right? That's yeah. that's what I mean. But like that solid guy that can move, because Miles Turner is no skinny guy either. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's just what I could think of. Yeah. And also, also talking about Purdue, Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I knew both of them. Especially Fletcher was like a higher rank guy because he's one of the best shooters in the country. Mm-hmm. He's already showing how good his jumper looks. But Braden Smith, he's a three-star kid out of Indiana. I I don't think anybody expected him to be able to step in and be this good this fast. Yeah. yeah they, they got a freshman backcourt that's playing really good. Mm-hmm. And um, as long as they don't hit like that kind of that rookie slump, you know, Purdue's going to they're going to look good for a while. Yeah. And there, there's another. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Virginia Tech, point guard Sean Padula. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched him, I think you should watch him. I think he'd be one of your favorite guys in the country. He's averaging 15, four and four, I think, right now. Mm-hmm. Shooting the lights out. He just he plays at his own pace. Yeah. He's a great ball. He doesn't have like crazy handle, but he his handle is very tight. He doesn't lose the ball. 
He just he gets to his spots mm. and he doesn't take terrible shots. He's just a really good college point guard. Yeah. Like he's he's kind of like a more a better shooting version of like TJ McConnell. Mm. He just knows how to play the game, but he also has some offensive talent. Gotcha. I like Sean Padula a lot. Cool. All right. Let's talk about the NBA. It's been a while. Pistons, still nothing to talk about. Uh, they just beat Miami because injuries all over the place. I was going to say, but, yeah. that injury report. Bogdanovich had a huge game. Now, I know a lot of people didn't actually sit out in that game for the Heat necessarily. Um, but looking at the injury report last night, it was funny because it literally, uh, I felt like it had the entire Miami Heat roster. I believe the injury report had Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, Max Struess, Duncan Robinson, Victor Oladipo. Tyler Hero ended up playing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, they all ended up playing, but they were all at one point on the injury report, which was just, it was just funny to see. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it was a good win. I mean, at this point, do we just trade Bojan? Like, he's been so good. I mean, I, you have to, whether it's later in the season or in the off season, you with with him having this much value, you right. got to get something back. You want to keep veteran, like we always say, you like to keep like a veteran or two around. But he's just shot the ball so good this year. He's yeah. been so good for this team that, uh, yeah, I agree. Like the value is probably too good that we have to try to get some sort of pick or young player back in the process. I'm sure there'll be a ton of teams calling about him, um, because obviously this Pistons team is going nowhere. Cade Cunningham. Who knows if he's a lot. I've heard some people say he might not play the rest of the season. Which right. Is, he yeah, he could sucks. get shut down for the season, which, which is good and bad. Yeah. It, it, the good part is that you get to see more of Jaden Ivey. You get to see the last chance of Killian Hayes, um, get to see some other guys step up, but it just stinks losing it, a year. It, it knocks off some of his development. Right. Cause he was getting into a really good groove mm -hmm. before he got hurt. Yeah. But the good thing, on the other hand, for the team, Beef Stew's back, Marvin Bagley's back. So most of the other injuries have resolved. Um, I still, I guess we haven't brought this up. I only brought this up in our little group chat. But the thing that's weird for me, and I guess I kind of get it because Bojan is playing so good, the Sadiq Bay to the bench thing has been really weird for me. And I get that you want to have, like, somebody that can come off the bench and be that scorer. But it's just weird. Like, Sadiq has had such a strange season to me. Um, He's had some pretty decent games. He hasn't had any big blow-up games at all. But then he's also had some just not-so-good games. Like, yeah. the win over Dallas, he had six points. He's shooting 27% from three. Yeah. And 40% from the field. So, I don't know. The thing that. But he's shooting like 89% from the free throw line. Right. Which is the weird part. And yeah. so, the other odd bit, too, is like if Cade was playing, where does Sadiq sit into the rotation? Because Cade would, pro would be taking Killian's minutes, obviously. Boyan would be probably still starting with. Because apparently they're going with Bagley over doing like a smaller Sadiq lineup. Um, I don't know. It's just curious to me. I, and I don't, I'm not sure what to think of it. I'm not saying that I'm giving up on Sadiq Bay or anything like that crazy, but it's just odd, I guess. Um, and it makes me slightly nervous. Just slightly. Um, one other thing, too Jalen Duran has to play more. Somehow, some way. I don't know. I know it's tough because the big man rotation is, is weird for this team uh, because you got Beef Stew playing 28 minutes, Marvin Bagley playing like 19 last night, uh, Jalen Duran played 18. I feel like we just got to find spots for him. I, I don't know how necessarily, but... Instead of giving both Alec Burks and Corey Joseph 20-plus minutes, you should guarantee Jalen Duran 20-plus minutes. Yeah, I, 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 you don't have to play Corey Joseph and Alec Burks that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I said their rotations is kind of odd at the moment. Like, and the the Kevin Knox minutes also. 
I hate to say he's had a couple he's, decent he's games. He's played well in his minutes in the past, like, two weeks mm-hmm. to a month, honestly. But, yeah, he shouldn't be playing more than, like, 14, 15 minutes a game at the most. Yeah. But I'm I'm already on board, and I know you can't you can't really do it, but I'm already on board to equalize Jalen Dern and Isaiah Stewart. But I agree. But I I know it's not gonna happen, but that's just where I would be at uh myself. Either way, Pistons, like we said, they're gonna be a bottom feeder team again, which is ultimately it's fine. Um it's gonna be another year. But maybe we get in the Victor Wembanyama stakes. Uh, okay, let's kind of review each conference real quick. Boston still going strong. Yeah, they're twenty and five. Tatum and Brown are just a different level combo. Right. Every now. time I think that the, those two guys are just gonna, you know, like at some point they have to struggle. The team's gonna have to go on a losing streak because those guys can't sustain what they're doing, and they have. They just keep doing. It. I don't know yeah. how it's done, but it, it keeps happening. They they get better every season. Mm-hmm. Jason Tatum is officially at that superstar level. Yeah. Because uh, he he's guaranteed for like 25 plus mm-hmm. around like five assists and five rebounds. Yeah. Almost every game. Yeah. It, and he it, usually gets more than that. It's crazy. Um, Milwaukee, they're 17 and six. They just dropped a game to a certain Western Conference team that we will talk about when we get to the Western Conference because it's crazy, actually. Um, but Milwaukee's still doing good. I mean, they they still don't even have Chris Middleton back, so they're not they're not in their full swing yet. So I wouldn't worry about them. They usually care about the playoffs more than anything. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and and we say that while they're seventeen and six, second yeah. in the Eastern <laughs> Conference. So like, <laughs> it just tells you. Uh, Cleveland's still sitting up there. They're sixteen and nine. Donovan Mitchell just came off of a forty ball. Yeah. Darius Garland's still playing well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're just in his own. Yep. They're in a bit of a zone right now. Yeah, I, I, like, I, don't, I really like it. I don't think they'll be able to necessarily take on Milwaukee or Boston just yet, but I think they're they're like a year away. Yeah, I I do think they'll they'll hang around this three four five spot for the rest of the season most likely. Um, Atlanta thirteen and eleven. This is where it starts to get crazy because the East is just pretty wild once you get to this yeah. point. Atlanta's dealing with some issues right now because did you hear about the Trey Young thing? No. So their last game. So he's hurt, not playing. Mm-hmm. He wasn't on the bench, and he wasn't at the game. A report came out that him and Nate McMillan got into like a huge blowout argument before mm-hmm. the game, and Trey just left. Nice. So he gets interviewed the next day about it, and he's just like weird. Like It's unfortunate that that got out. That was private. Mm-hmm. And the interviewer, the, the guy with press, is like, well, it's not private anymore. Yeah. Like, we know what happened. You weren't at the – John Collins is in a boot and he's at the game. You're the face of the franchise. Mm-hmm. You weren't here. And Trey Young just, like, wouldn't address it. Hmm. So, I I don't know if his, like, ego is getting to him. Maybe. I'm, I'm not sure if him and Nate McMillan just aren't getting along, but they, they need to figure out something because the trade they made with for DeJounte Murray has pretty much been successful so far. Right. And they're only 13 and 11. Mm-hmm. And there's rumors about John Collins trades, and there I don't know what the move needs to be, but something needs to change. Yeah, and I, I I'm not sure what it is. Right. And the crazy thing is they, if they can't move on from like if if I mean the John Collins thing has been going on forever. Yeah. And he's just never been moved. So if he doesn't get moved, all of a sudden they flip the script and they try to move Trey Young. I uh, I don't see that happening. <laughs> he's the face. Yeah, but. If he becomes a a problem, then I, I guess they consider trading him. But th- this the whole point of the Dejounte Murray trade right. was putting Trey and Dejounte together. Yeah, but like at this point, technically, they are, they're probably good enough to be able to move on from him. They just got Bogdan Bogdanovich back from injury recently, uh, so he's healthy. So he'll kind of be that number three guy for them most likely. DeJounte Murray, know, we know that he can take over a team. The young guys have played better than I thought. Like, A.J. Griffin mm-hmm. hasn't had a hard time getting acclimated. Uh, Onyeka Okungwu has only gotten better. Yeah. Like, they 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 have a good roster. Clint Capella get, gets banged up every season. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a problem. So, that's part of their issue, too, is injuries. But 
and I don't think Trey Young's going to get moved, but I'm just saying that there is a slim possibility. So, yeah, Atlanta's right there. Indiana, 13-11. and 11. Did you see the game Andrew Nimbard had? Yeah, 31. 31-13-8. and eight. Mm-hmm. He was, like, toying with Steph Curry. Yeah. It is – it's really wild how deep these drafts are becoming. And that's kind of how I felt with him in college is that at Gonzaga – He was consistently high level. Yeah. But he felt like he was getting held back. Like, there were times in the tournaments where I just felt like he could probably do more for this team, and I just never saw it. And granted, they have Drew Timmy. They had Jalen Suggs. Like, they had a lot of guys. So, maybe that's part of it. And Because, to me, he always seemed like a very just he'll get the job done kind of point He's, guard. He can give you anything you need as a point guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, for them to be sitting at 13-11 – they're a fun young team. Yeah, I, I'm very surprised about how Rick Carlisle. I assumed he would have a problem with mm-hmm. this type of situation, but he's playing the young guys. He's getting the best out of them, and he's yeah. trusting them. That's something you really don't see out of Rick Carlisle, right? Especially in the Dallas years when it was all about win every game, trust the vets. Mm-hmm. Now, now it seems like yeah, he's embracing yeah these young guys, and he's he's yeah doing the right thing. Tyrese Halliburton's been incredible. Uh, Miles Turner's had some crazy good games. Um, the rumors around him are still swirling, but I feel like at this point, if he's played so well, if they're in contention, it's got to be tough for them yeah. to even try that. Ben Matherin has been the the biggest thing. That's like he's in the Rookie of the Year candidate, yeah, and he's kind of their sixth man. So it's wild mm-hmm. how much it's all coming together, right? And they still could make moves, right? And the, the funny thing to me with the Pacers, um roster is like Chris Duarte like hasn't even really played he's been injured a lot I think they might have to trade him they probably will yeah but like with Ben Matherin being there now but we talked highly of him just like a year ago he he had really good moments as a rookie last year right they traded for Aaron Neesmith from Boston Mm -hmm. he's had some good games like they have several guards yep that yeah they got Jalen Smith too Isaiah Jackson a lot of just young guys that have shown up in certain moments so that's kind of cool for Indiana. Uh, Brooklyn, they're 13 and 12. They're KD, KD is doing everything he can. Mm-hmm. Kyrie still has his moments. Yeah. But and he has yeah, his off the field the, moments the, too. The, the roster is just, yeah. Ben Simmons kind of banged up again a little bit. So that's Seth Curry cool. has come back firing, but mm-hmm. Seth Curry, like. Yeah. I'm curious to see how Ben Simmons is going to come back after this another little sprain. I think he had like a, a knee sprain or something like that. Um, so he's been out the past couple games. But he was just kind of starting to get into a little bit of a groove there before that. So I'm curious if he can keep improving. Uh, Philadelphia, 12 and 12. They they just they they can't stay healthy right now. No. They're they're hoping they everybody will come back at some point. James Harden, I think he's getting close. Uh Tyrese Maxey, I can't remember what his timetable looks like. So right now it's just Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris, basically, trying to hold down the fort, doing the best yeah. they can. I want to say shout out to Tobias Harris for he's probably the one player in NBA history that makes that much money and never gets blamed for anything. Mm -hmm. And that has to be incredible. But he also doesn't get a lot of notice either. He's just kind of that guy. But when you you get that kind of contract, most players, they'd start to talk about you more. Mm -hmm. You occasionally hear, Tobias Harris needs to step up. Yeah. And then (laughs) he he just goes out and plays and averages his like 17. Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's quiet. Yeah. Good for Tobias. Toronto also twelve and twelve. Fred Van Vliet hasn't been very good. And they're also dealing with injuries. Yeah. They've been up and down. Uh, they're kind of where I expected them to be, to be honest. Um, New York sitting at eleven and thirteen. New York is New York and Washington Washington is Washington. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think you need to say more than although, that. Although to be fair Washington has had some good games. I was gonna I, say yeah. Porzingis has looked pretty darn good. Him and Kyle Kuzma. Uh, all of a sudden. So, if they're a team that maybe if they could figure some things out, they might have a chance to move up a little bit. Uh, Miami, well, I kind of mentioned they've been banged up. Chicago, 9-14. and Not what they wanted. The, the I think the whole Lonzo situation just throws a wrench into all of Which, it. To it's, me, though, that doesn't – to me, like that's he's just, the, To me, he's the key to it all. But that's just wild. Like, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, bunch of young pieces. Well, here's the thing, though. I think we, we see now 
Nikola Vucevic on a bad team is an all-star. On a very good team, he's still a quality player, but you don't get real defense. You get rebounding like every three or four games. That, that's, that's not real consistency. Zach Levine, you know you're going to get the points, and he's gotten better as a defender, but Zach Levine isn't a superstar. DeMar, we all respect him. Mm-hmm. Caruso, we all respect him. The rest of the roster, it's a bunch of young guys that are good, but what is where do they take you? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just a little odd. It is disappointing. I understand what you're saying, but mm-hmm. when you really look at the situation, I think it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Then we got Charlotte, Detroit, and Orlando. Bottom of the barrel. Poor Charlotte. <laughs> um, on the West, we got Phoenix at 16 and 8, uh, even though they just lost to Dallas. It's the wild, wild West, as always. Phoenix playing pretty good. Um, New Orleans up to number two, 15 and 8, kind of quietly, honestly. Zion has had some really good games the past week. Yeah. And Jose Alvarado had 38. Yeah, eight threes. That was a crazy game. That was, that was cool to see for him. So New Orleans, happy to see them up there. Memphis again, fifteen and nine. We know who they are at this point. Like they're just gonna bang out wins. The Sacramento Kings. Hey, <laughs> hey. Light can, the can beam. We talk, can we talk about them for a second? Light the beam. Can we talk about the Kings? I st- I. I still don't believe. I can't. I, just, I don't know. Listen, man. They started so bad, and now they, they've kind of been playing good. Mike Brown is a good NBA coach. They finally have a roster that isn't disrespectful to their fans. And De'Aaron Fox is becoming what we thought he could be. He is starting to hit that all-star level. He's having some big games. DeMontis Sabonis has been pretty consistent. He hasn't shot it very well. But as a decision maker and a rebounder, he's been high level. Kevin Herter, your boy, I think is at the top of the league in three point percentage. He's I, around like fifty percent. I honestly will say I think my guy Kevin Herter may be one of the big reasons that they're playing good. Like he's having he one of his he's best shootings. He's shooting seasons. the he's almost at fifty percent shooting. Yeah. From from three, which is incredible so far. And he's averaging fifteen and a half points a game, which is good for him. Yeah. And this is what I always thought that Atlanta should have done with him and just utilize him just a little bit more. I know he's probably he's not going to be that like crazy breakout star guy. But every once in a while he could he's dropped 30 before. So like I don't know. Yeah. The the him Malik it's Monk It's cool to see. Yeah. Malik Monk is doing exactly what they want out of him, mm-hmm. scoring off the bench. Keegan Murray has his on off moments, but he's still he's he's showing why he was that that high of a pick. And they're they're just they're playing good basketball. Yeah, they're playing good basketball. They're beating some good teams. Who knows if they can stick this out and make the playoffs? Right. It'd be awesome to see them back in the playoffs. I know that that city would be electric mm-hmm. if they got back. So yeah, I hope they keep that up. Yeah. Uh, then we got Denver at fourteen and ten. Jamal Murray still hasn't gotten in a groove. Yeah, they're they're still kind of working through their chemistry things, I think. Um, but I mean, they got Nikola Jokic, so yeah. The Clippers, 14-11. and 11. Kawhi had a game winner against Charlotte. He's probably going to sit out like five games say, after that. That's the hardest part is the whole Kawhi situation is weird to me. I don't even understand it. You don't get any word from it. Like, I, this, I think I said in over under like a month ago before the NBA season of how many games he would play. I'm going to set another one. Over under 30 games. How many games does Kawhi Leonard play this season, oh, Joey? Man. It's a good line, though. <laughs> Over under 30. It might be like 31, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it's weird. Dallas, also, t- shouts out to the random Zubach 30-20 game. Uh, well, <laughs> well, it was almost 30, 30, 30 Should have been 30 was 31 30. and 29. He fouled out, though, with like two minutes to it's go or something. Incredible performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dallas sitting at 13 and 11. They have some issues. They, they, they've they have just, some issues. They just can't get over their depth issues. And if Luka has a bad game, like, that's it. So that's kind of their, their tough part. They rely a little bit too much on Luka. Coming right behind them. I'd say more than a little, but yeah. Yeah. Coming right behind them, Portland Trailblazers, also 13 and 11. Also they sometimes rely on that too much. They are a decent team. They are. And I, I didn't think they would be a decent team. See, I like Jeremy that, Grant has had some really good games. Anthony Simons had... Yeah, fifty yeah. the other day or forty five. I think it was like forty five. Yeah, but they've they're they're playing 
solid basketball as a team. Yeah. And I, I think this is – I think they should be a little bit better probably because they got some – some young guys that are they good got too. Gary Payton hasn't played yet. They really need him to get in there. Yeah. Um, okay. Lillard is back though. That's good for them. So I I would expect them to kind of go on a a little run probably. Also, here. the rookie Shaden Sharp. It literally looks like he's jumping off a trampoline when he's in the air. Yeah. Pretty... That tip dunk against LA, mm-hmm. like his head was at it was like Gerald Green stuff. Yeah, he was staring at the rim like just floating. Mm-hmm. It it makes no sense. He has a lot of moments where it looks like oh, okay, this he looks like a top five pick. Yeah, he he could have a very bright future. Right, Utah, they falling back down to earth. <laughs> Fourteen and twelve, yeah. number nine. Listen, they had their Lori marketing is still playing well. Yeah, but yeah, the the team they're 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 still scrappy. Yeah, they'll be one of those tough times to teams to take out. Golden State at 10, 13, and 12. Let's, let's talk about these. These next two teams, like, kind of collectively have a lot of problems. I don't know. I, I think Golden State's just one of those teams. They they eventually find a groove. Uh, I, this this seems like in It's definitely. This seems in, you're definitely, different. I think the funny thing, though, with Golden State that you you don't, you didn't realize how much these, like, Little pieces mattered to this team. The Gary Payton, the Juan Toscano Andersons, all those guys that just kind of left on, you know, for them now, big deals. Um, it's adding up. And their depth is a problem. They're, they haven't gotten the development that they wanted from James Wiseman or Jonathan Kuminga or Moses Moody even, for that matter. I think they assumed they would have taken that step up by now. And they just haven't. So that's that is concerning. Yeah. Also, until like the last week, Clay has not been good so far this season. Mm-hmm. Jordan Poole hasn't been great. Right. It it's just been a disappointment overall from the roster. Yeah. Well, and that's why I think I, I think they will figure something out at, at some point. Um It looks like they miss Otto Porter and GP two. And I they assume miss those guys. They will make a trade at some point. They just have to. They signed DiVincenzo. Why don't they play him more? Like, as is, isn't he supposed to be a veteran presence at this point? Yeah, it's a good question. Then we got Minnesota at eleven and twelve. Shouts out to that Rudy Gobert trade, huh? I mean, going all in this this quickly. Just, yeah, is he really the problem though? Like, he's not the big problem, but he's a part of the. And problem. right now, the, their biggest problem right now is they're going to be out Carl Anthony Towns for four to six weeks. So, here's the thing though. Him and Rudy never made sense together. <laughs> never they, did on paper to me. I thought it made sense on paper. Cause Kat, I, don't th- I don't think Cat playing the four in today's game makes sense. I, I Him think, being a five and having his game at the five opens up everything. Yeah. I just think that on paper, they thought they're going to turn Cat into more of a stretch four, which I don't think is his best that, part of his that's game. Not his, that's not his thing. Even, though, even he's, though he's a three-point shooter. Even though he says he's the best three-point shooting big man of all time or whatever. Um Still, that's where I saw it on paper is that they're going with this motto of, you know, Cat's going to be this stretch four that has really good post-up game that can't use his post-up game because Rudy Gobert is in the paint. They still don't know how to figure out. <laughs> yeah. No, I get that part. I'm, I'm just saying I understood what they were trying to think they yeah. were doing. There's still a lot of time left, so it could be figured out, but yeah, it, it doesn't look good so far. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't. Okay, it, see, 11 and 13, we got to move. Jeez. Um, Shea Gill just is a monster, man. Yeah, he's just been so good for them. A, yeah. I, I, I hope, wish Chet was healthy. Yeah. It would have been so awesome seeing Chet on this team. Yeah. 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 They're close. They're so close. Lakers 10 and 13. And they've won. I think like seven and three of, of their last yeah. 10. Is Darvin Ham getting the Anthony Davis that is supposed to be the Anthony Davis? <sighs> I, because he scored over 30 in the last, like, eight. He's been going crazy lately. He had 44 and then 55 and 17. Mm-hmm. He's playing like that guy. Yeah. It's like his final year with New Orleans before he got hurt. Like, when him and DeMarcus Cousins were going crazy. Yeah. That's what it feels like again. Um, he hasn't. He's not even 30 yet. No. 
<laughs> he's not 30 yet, no. which is the crazy part. Mm-hmm. And, like, I hate to say it, LeBron's having a good season, too. Um, I think he he's consistent, LeBron. I don't think he's... Yeah. They still need help. Yeah, they, they, they still do. But they, this is part one of what they need to be a good team. Yeah. Anthony Davis needs to be a superstar and the best player on the team. Mm. Check mark. Yep. Russ has accepted his bench role. He's playing well in his bench role. Check mark. Now, you look at Rob Polinka mm-hmm. and you say, fix this. Right. Get me some pieces. Yes. Houston is seven and 17. Yeah. I would have thought that they would have looked a little a little better just because all their young pieces have shown I don't think they're very well coached. That's yeah, a, that might yeah. be that might be part of it. Um but because they got a lot of young pieces that I think can do something at some point, but just might take some time. And then of course the San Antonio Listen, Spurs. I wanna I wanna applaud San Antonio for starting strong and then going just full <laughs> they went full tank. Yeah. Like I I I love the approach that they've gone with. They've shown the fan base that there's talent to stick with. Mm-hmm. And then they said it's a Wimby time. Yeah. Wimby or Scoot, one of them. We're getting them. Mm-hmm. I I respect that. Yeah. I respect it. So, that's the NBA. It's pretty wild. Things are starting to pick up there. Um we'll get to it more as the weeks go on cuz once it hits Christmas time, that's where it starts to feel like the NBA because you got NBA games all day on Christmas. So. I haven't watched an NBA game. I can't remember the last time I actually watched one. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm honestly, I watch like, the- I like NBA regular season. I rarely ever like tune in. I watch highlights mainly. Yeah, and just pay attention to what's happening. It's usually tough for me for my work schedule, but usually I can catch like the second half and I watch to the finish at least. Yeah, I will watch on Christmas. There I'll be go. there for that. Alrighty, we got to fly through picks. We can't even discuss them, to be honest. Um, last week, Malik, you got 10 correct picks. Since you had beautiful 100 picks on the season. Okay. And I got 11 picks correct. At, the, at this point, I just think you... So I have 105. You have, you have the, the secret sauce. It's, it's starting to get to where I have a, a nice lead. Uh, even though it's only five, but it just it starts to feel yeah. nice as the season's winding down. You're you're edging me out almost every week. Um, so we'll have to see. So week fourteen. I shouldn't have talked so much trash at the beginning. <laughs> Tomorrow Ugh. we have Vegas playing the Rams, the lowly Rams who just signed Baker Mayfield. The Rams. I mean, not no no Raiders, <laughs> Whoa, Raiders, 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 Raiders. You heard it here first. Raiders. I apologize. <laughs> Minnesota. The at Raiders the are dead to me, but Raiders. Minnesota. At Detroit, we do have to take 30 seconds to talk about Detroit. They are favored in this game. Let's do it. The Lions, Lions. are 5-7. and seven. They are in the wild card hunt. Lions. Full going, send. Yes. <laughs> Full send. They looked good. They've looked good. You have to yes. be honest. Um, this is big. These next two games are big. Minnesota and the, the, the finishing schedule isn't. Yeah. It's a joke for the most part. If you can get past Minnesota and New York, I think a cakewalk is never a cakewalk for the Lions. But you'd they, be sitting they at seven and seven with what Carolina and yeah, a bunch of Green Bay. Yeah, it'll be good. Cleveland at Cincinnati. Yikes, Deshaun Watson. Cincy. I'm so mad that their defense won that game for them. I wanted them to lose so bad. Since he's getting in the groove again. Yep, I gotta yeah. go with Cincinnati too. Joe Burrow is three and zero against the Chiefs. And some of these early games are boring. Houston at Dallas. It looks like Kyle Allen is no longer the starter. They're going back to Davis Mills. That's when you know your just, franchise just, just is in trouble. Em. Just pick them. Dallas. Yeah. Jacksonville at Tennessee. Jacksonville just getting swamped by the Lions. Tennessee. Every other week they play good and then they play bad. Tennessee just got destroyed by the Eagles. Who Give me Jacksonville. Will bounce back. Wow. Okay. I'm going to take Tennessee. Derrick Henry had a bad game last week. He's ready to have some revenge. Philadelphia at the Giants. Giants just tied. It's kind of hurting the Lions. I'm going to go Philly. Yeah, unfortunately. Baltimore at Pittsburgh. Lamar Jackson uh, not going to yeah. play. Lamar Tyler Jackson Hunter. isn't playing. 
Kenny Pickett got a win at, uh, in Atlanta. <sighs> Do I take the man? Give me the Steelers. Okay, I will take Baltimore. I think this is a good 50-50 This split. might be the week that just separates it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Jags and the Steelers. Maybe. You never know you with Baltimore. Take a few chances. Baltimore is kind of weird, though. Yeah. Kansas City at Denver. Yikes. <laughs> Tampa Bay at San Francisco. This is kind of interesting. Maybe. I don't. If Tampa Bay does what they did at the end of the Saints game, sure. Do you, are you taking the Party Niners? Tell me that's what you're doing. Oh, man, I like that. You're taking the Brock Party Niners. I think he played pretty good, honestly. I, I like the way they played. I'm taking the Party Niners. Okay. I'll take Tampa Bay then. I, I yeah. think. San Francisco would be the favorite. I'm so happy they didn't sign Baker Mayfield. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. Carolina at Seattle. Kind of interesting, actually. Who's I know Seattle, I know that Geno Sam Darnold? Yeah. Okay. Almost positive. Um, but I know that Geno Smith has been like one of the best quarterbacks. Their defense is still suspect. So if Sam Darnold is starting again, here, I'll give it I'll oh. get, I'm gonna take Carolina. On the ESPN app. On the quarterback matchup side, there's no quarterback listed for Carolina. Great. Okay. It's just an empty space. Well, I'll take Carolina <laughs> still then. The Seattle. All righty. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it on Twitter real quick. That is that is hilarious. I love that that's the situation the Panthers are in, basically. Man, if only Matt Corral was healthy. Yeah. Would have been nice Man. to see him. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. This is two days ago. So that'd be Monday, though. So that should be fine. The Panthers are naming PJ Walker the backup to Sam Darnold this week versus Seattle. Fun, good times. Okay, so we are back to the Sam Darnold show. Nice. I will take Carolina then. Miami at the Chargers. I am so glad they moved this game into the Sunday night game rather than seeing Kansas City and Russell Wilson. I'm gonna take Miami. I think the Chargers are kind of like a rudderless ship right now. After Tua they, just they tumbled last week. Yes, I'm After taking the, to a I'm week. taking the Chargers. It, it uh, it's kind of suspicious. It seems like you have a vendetta against Tua. I don't. He goes know. down one week and you're like, ha! I just like. See? I just like this Miami team a lot, and I just I, I don't know. I'm not sold on Tua. I I don't. Know. I think he's a good quarterback that had a bad week. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, he's definitely not that bad. I just think he keeps getting no, too- Don't stop listening to the hype. I don't know. Stop listening to the extra hype. <laughs> okay. Just, yeah. And on Monday night, the Mac attack takes on the Call of Duty King, Kyler Murray. <laughs> the Cod King. <laughs> oh, New England at Arizona. Give me New England, man. All right. I'm going to go with the home team, Arizona. I, I, have, I have no trust in Kyler or Cliff. <laughs> New England's a weird one, too, though. Their they defense, are. their defense, kind of holds them together. Uh, at the end of the day, and they're going to throw a lot at that. Uh, I was about to call him that little quarterback. I'm not going to do that. That's disrespectful. <laughs> at Kyler, <laughs> oh jeez, the Cod King. All right, and that'll do it for today. Again, Lions, huge weekend this weekend. If they lose, it's all over. It's all over. Um. The bright news is Jameson Williams did get one target. He didn't get a catch. Played a couple snaps. He's getting there. This team, not, I'm not trying to drink too much juice. He's drinking the Kool-Aid. But Don't even try to hide. But they're fun. fun to they watch. are fun. Yeah. The only reason that I can drink the Kool-Aid a little bit, though, is because the Rams are so bad. Yes. So, go Lions. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Joey, can you say one more time how many picks and championships Michigan has won? The Michigan Wolverines are back-to-back Big Ten champions. Back-to-back Big Ten champions. What a time to be alive.